Hey, good morning. I've been asked several times uh, various things about the, the 5C call at San the Monarch 10 Wave. And uh, I have uh, a bit of experience and uh, some opinions and uh, things I can express on them. Now, right off, where is it? Uh, feisty collets aren't very good <laughs> because there's a problem with them. They have a very short taper here, and then they go into the uh, sleeve or your closer or whatever that thing is, your collet nose. And it's got to have some clearance for the straight part to slide into. And you'll find that adapters, spindles, stuff like that, that have excessive clearance here, it'll cause more pushover because this taper is it's not very long. And so it'll rock from tool pressure. It'll, it'll rock in, in your spindle, okay? Unless it fits real tight. And there's some things you can do to kind of help. And one of the things that doesn't help is a lever closer. It actually makes things worse. And the reason a lever closer, I don't care if it's on a hard inch monarch or anything, I don't care how much they cost or how cool they are, how fast you can use them. They're a downgrade to accuracy, and the reason is is they introduce a non-super precision bearing way out on the left end of your spindle. And what happens? A little bit more vibration. If you've been following me, you know what vibration does. Makes parts bigger on the end. And uh, the way I know these things is with more sensitive instruments like the, the dial snap gauge, the dial bore gauges and stuff like that. I call them the truth. You can fool yourself with a micrometer. Oh yeah, that's my microphone. No, it's there. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it. But I tell you what, you put something like a snap gauge on something and you get the brutal honesty of what's going on. So, you want to get the most accuracy out of one of these, it's been found, I've researched it, I know about it, talk to people that know about it, even people on the internet have mentioned it and stuff like that. You're going to get better accuracy with a hand wheel closer, which nobody makes anymore. And the reason you don't get those hand wheel closers is they're extremely dangerous. And the reason is, is uh, well, you can leave them in the spindle without a collet in them and turn the machine on and they'll rattle out and flip. They'll start spinning, get to the end of the spindle, do a deal like that, then flip. The worst possible scenario. <laughs> and I've been told about it, and people have been killed by that action. But the worst of them is right here and especially uh, on the larger collets, uh, how thin that is. So if you're machining something, you have a hand wheel collet closer and you're running at 4,000 RPM and this portion decides to break off. Then you have a collet closer spinning at 4,000 RPM being ejected out the back of the machine. And I'm told, I'm told those things will go absolutely crazy in a, <laughs> in a shop. So, but there, that's why you can't buy, nobody sells uh, a hand wheel call a closer. And that's why, because they're, <laughs> they're dangerous. But, all caution aside, we're looking for accuracy, and uh, myself, and uh, I paid the price for it too, see. I got the machine that'll do it. And I told you, the Monarch 10 double is the best machine available, but it's up to you to make it work, okay? To adapt it to what you need it to do. And I'm gonna show you how I adapted the Monarch 10 double E to do what I needed to, to do with 5C collets. And uh, this is a case where the factory accessories are simply not good enough, but they're good enough for most people. And I'll show you the most demanding application that I 
constructed the, the system I have now. Okay, I'm going to get ready to do that. Well, the Monarch 10 WE being a tool maker's way, it would only make sense to make tools on it. And a really basic tool is your back plate, your chuck back plates. I fabricated this um, back plate here. This here was a uh, water pump shaft, <laughs> a big one. And it's good chrome steel. I like to salvage as much stuff as I possibly can. So that's what this is, is a, is a water pump shaft. And it was crudely hacked off with a torch and laying over there in the junkyard years ago. And I looked at it and I go, hey, there's several back plates like this in there. Okay. And I've got a tool maker's lathe. <laughs> okay, so I fabricate my own back plates. I started doing that uh, in the 90s. I usually date stuff here, but I don't know if I did on this back plate here. It, it looks like I've done a couple of different things with it. But I make the pins too. Uh, you can buy them, but back then I didn't have a good source, so I just went ahead and made the pins. And I made these out of shock absorber shafts that were uh, at the scrapyard. They were like a very large shock absorber that they were using on some food processing equipment like that. So I made this entire thing on the Monarch 10 WE, and, uh, but I, I did the final fit on this flat surface, uh, on my hair surface grinder, you know, just ground it, ground it, ground until I got it, fit it on the spindle, and uh, then machined it on the spindle, okay? So, that's step one of what I'm gonna show you is, you need to be able to do that right off. Make your own back plates. It's a tools maker slave, why not? <laughs> what else are you going to do with it? Okay, let me set this down here and I'll show you what I did. Okay, donkey. And here it is. Let's see if I can get a good angle on that. I got this uh, camera. Sorry about that, I just experienced a GoPro 9 power failure <laughs> they they do it sometimes i don't know why it's got 91 percent battery and the thing shut itself off it they do get hot okay now this is the 5c collet chuck i fabricated for the monarch 10 double e lay i did not invent this i copied this design um, from a cnc adjustable for radial run out 5c collet chuck they sold them uh back at the time uh manhattan supply company uh, msc they call it now uh, at the time they were almost uh, two thousand dollars but they were meant to go on cnc machines and they'd have like uh, different backs but the front looks similar to this and if you, if you uh, see this, this is what I copied. There's no reason for me to buy such things like that because I have a Monarch 10 double E toolmaker slave. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the construction of this thing here. And what I, and the reason, the reason for this is uh, automotive racing. Now, back in the 1990s, there was a change, and you know, my job is to remove metal, and it's up to the customer, customer to tell me where and how much. So that's, that's what I do. And often I don't know exactly why or what I'm doing things for. But at the time, I did build Harley-Davidson street engines, and so, a, a person uh, came in and they built racing engines, automotive racing engines. And they go, uh, Don, I got a problem here. I got these titanium valves. This is back in the 90s. 
and uh, I got to size them uh, to the size I needed. He goes, he bought oversized valves, and he needed them to be an exact size. And as I remember, they were for racing folks, these engines. And uh, when you got it, engines like that, that run at a high constant speed, they do a valve overlap uh, with the cam. And it's sort of like both valves will be slightly op open for a period of time. And the, the velocity of the exhaust going out helps draw fresh fuel in. And so they get the valves, they can hit each other during that overlap. So it gets really critical on, on, on uh, size because they're going to go for the most power they can, balancing off with uh, how much you can get away with before things blow up. So that's why I invented this. I invented it. Well, I copied it. Okay. Now, one of the aspects of this whole thing it was back in the 90s was that the specs changed for valves. And uh, a, a good uh, indicator of that is the Sun and Company came out with a centerless valve refacer that guaranteed two ten thousandths concentric of the valve stem, which is in the chuck, and the, and the valve phase here that goes into the, to the valve seat and the cylinder head. So they changed that spec from who knows what it was, a thousandths. You know, your old Sioux valve grinder would run a thousandths or so. Well, they changed that to two ten thousandths, and that caused some uh, problems. So the race car engine, of course, builder has had the brand new... Uh, uh, valve grinder, but the problem was is removing material. I mean, the thing was meant to reface the valve, you know, holding it centerlessly. You can't take an eighth inch off titanium or something. You know, these valves are titanium that they were using. And uh, back then, uh, he was coating the valves with ceramic. So I would machine the valves and uh, he would send them off and have them ceramic coated, get them back, and then fit them into his motors. But okay, my job was to reduce the diameter of titanium valves, and they are so tough to cut. And uh, as a matter of fact, I could do most of them in the hard dense chucker, you know? And I ran coolant on them too, and I did on this. Um, because they get hot, that, that hard titanium, when you start cutting it, it starts getting extremely hot. And the hotter it gets, the harder it is to cut. Okay. So, <laughs> so we have a 5C collet. And one of the things that I have to do is get behind here and cut this face. So if I had a too large of a valve, I'd start cutting it down this way. I'd have to thin it this way. I have to work it back here. And, uh, and then cut the, the seating face when I got it to the right diameter. And uh, he liked me to cut it because it'd be too hard for his grinder to start from that point. So he wanted me to start it. And then he found, he found that this worked so well. And these guys all had these secrets. And you heard of multi-angle valve seats. This guy was doing multi-angles on the valves. And I could cut them for him on those hard titanium uh, valves. And I don't know how he, you know, I, I never seen him build the engines. But anyway, I did my part, and he did all this stuff. But this is how I did it, and this is how I got that concentricity. Two ten thousandths by having the chuck adjustable for run out. So this is uh, like a copy of a CNC fully adjustable for radial run out collet chuck.
and I completely fabricated it except for one part. And I'm going to get you over here and I'm going to show you that part. Okay, I'm going to take the valve out here. Take the collet out too. This piece here, you can see it right here, is a hardened part that I purchased from uh, MSC. It's called a CNC 5C straight shank collet holder. So I can't remember the size of the shank, inch and a quarter, or inch and a half, and, and it came with a nut. It's intended to stick a 5C collet in and put in your CNC machine tool rack or whatever those things are. Okay, so I took one of those. It cost 150 bucks. I got the uh, the best quality one I could, and I and I machined these parts here out of that water shaft, that chrome steel water shaft. Two pieces, just like the the 5C, uh, not the 5, but the buck uh, adjust true chuck so this front piece held to the back piece with these screws and then here's the side adjuster screws here okay so i made these two pieces and then i pressed this piece in this hardened piece okay and the beauty of it is if i could ever wear it out which i won't in my lifetime is i could push that out and put another one in you know, if it wore. Okay, see how easy it was to make that? And look at the benefit of it. Adjustable for run-up. Do you know what that means? It means you can use cheaper collets. <laughs> That's one thing. Okay, so I'm not done. This was a tough job. And uh, I had to... Um, uh, I had to hold these valves. They had a lot larger head here. This is a 5 16th stem, and I can't remember the size of those stems of the valves I was doing for them, and I did a lot of them. And he, would, he paid a good price for it. You know, enough for me to construct this and the hand wheel closer, which I will show next. All right, this lathe's for sale here, but this um, hand wheel closer and the collar chuck are not. And uh, why would you why would you want these? You buy this, you make them yourself. That's that's how that works. Okay, so there's another reason I won't sell this too, because <laughs> it could kill you. Okay, the uh, this is the closer I made. Now. I don't, from experience, I don't use uh, 5C collets over three quarters of an inch because they're not strong enough to uh, do what I want them to do. And uh, the, the 5C collets are the worst chucking system I have other than the six job buck adjustable six inch chuck, which is miserable. But everything's got its place, right? No tool will solve every problem. Okay, so I make this, uh, and I'm also going to, I've been trying to talk about it, it's the two thousandths rule. With your eye, you should be able to detect two thousandths run out. And if you look carefully at things, often you can uh, um, with your eye, judge two thousandths on other things, like like maybe the width of the crest of a thread, if you look carefully. So you want to open your eyes and look carefully. And so they call uh, work, used to, this is old stuff, they used to call work coarser, uh, than two thousandths. Anything tighter than two thousandths was precision. Anything looser than two thousandths was semi-precision. And I think semi-precision maybe, oh 
gosh, go to 128th of an inch in the old time. I don't know. All those old terms and stuff like that. But also, two thousandths. It's an interesting number in industry. And I found it in uh, crankshafts, uh, like for motorcycles, snowmobiles, uh, just about anything you can think of, multiple piece crankshafts, small engines. Always the spec, Harley Davidson, Yamaha, Honda, it's all assemble that crankshaft within two thousandths of an inch. Okay, over two thousandths is uh, vibration time. And uh, you really start noticing vibration. I read this in, some ki in the kinemetal uh, material, uh, I, I believe it's regarding the Romicron head, where uh, they guarantee operators plus or minus 80 millionths of an inch. And uh, that's for a jig bore. And uh, you can do stuff like that on, uh, on like this Monarch here if uh, you want to. Okay, let's look at, let's talk about this. So I, I construct this thing, I make it a tight fit, okay, at the end of the spindle. And by the way, this also fits both uh, spindle styles. Right here, I'm going to show the construction here. I got an O-ring uh, hold in it. Let me see if I can get that O-ring a little bit forward. Okay, right here's a sleeve, or a spacer. You take that out, and you can use this on the older Monarch 10 E. You have to have this spacer in for the newer spindles, like this 1983. So this, I made this to fit both. Now, this is how I did this. Let's see if I can get the snap ring off here. It's not on very tight, and I've taken it off a bunch of times to show. Let's see if I can get that out of there. I might have to turn the camera off to do it. I got it. Get my thumb behind it. And I can show you how I constructed this thing here. So the chuck... <laughs> I'm going to have to get an O-ring pick. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, I got the O-ring picked and got that uh, snap ring over. Now this is my invention. I've never seen anybody else do it, and I'm glad to show it to you. Okay, for thrust on this 5C, call it closer, hand wheel call it closer. This is how I did it, right there. I used the Tamkin Baron. See that? Okay, let's look up in here. Let me flip this around a little bit. There's the race down in there. See how that works? And I'll tell you what, that is slick. But what it does, it's a single temp kit. And I have enough play in this sleeve that it'll allow a little bit of tilt here, okay? So, I can actually, and I had a job to do that, offset this 50, not that much, 30 thousandths, maybe. But I had a job where a guy needed some small offset pins that were like 10 thousandths offset on them. And I was able to do it by just offsetting this, uh, this chuck. But this uh, Timken Baron allows that, okay? All, the, all of this stuff is uh, basically salvaged. Now, the shaft of this, I'm going to show you this. Now, I mentioned I don't use, uh, don't use the chuck for parts over three quarters of an inch. So this tube here is uh, hydro a hydraulic product, hydraulics, and it's, uh, it's ground on the inside, and it's also ground on, uh, on the inside, and it's also ground on the outside. And that makes this a really nice balanced piece. But the diameter is reduced from a standard 5C collet closet. So this is what I did. 
I ta I threaded and tack welded a threaded sleeve onto this piece here. Do you see that? It didn't need to be the thin standard um what am I saying? The thin standard call it closer sleeve. It needed to be just like this. I don't need uh, larger than a three quarter bore, and I think that's just exactly what this is here. Okay? Plus, it has the strength. Because one of the things I had to do um, with this um, job with those valves was get the collets extra tight. I mean, as tight as you can get them. And that gets scary in the fact that you can snap them off. And uh, I didn't have one snap off running, but I broke a collar, uh, pulled the end, the threaded end off right here, tightening it. And what I do to get them that tight, I got them as tight as I needed them to be, which is tight, is I put these holes here so I can put a bar in there with a pin on it and, and get it really tight. So this thing, these are very hazardous. And this one's extra hazardous because, because it's got this knurl on it. And if you walk by this machine and it was running three or four thousand RPMs, you got your your shirt cut in this thing, uh, it might be the end of you. I mean, it, that would be ugly. <laughs> so when I use this, and I'm going to show you this. And there we go. Let me get this up here. Let me set this so I can adjust that camera for you. And you can see. Okay, I slide this in the end to get that o ring back, that clip back. Right back in. Okay, I slip this in. And what I did in my old shop was I rolled a roll away toolbox back here to catch this in case it uh, spits out. But what I can do here is I can roll my cutter grinder uh, table over here and catch it. You know, just just have it there to prevent it from walking out and uh, deciding to fly around this room at 4,000 RPMs. Okay, I think I described this about as best as I can. If you have any questions, be sure to ask. Okay. Now I'm going to get back on to uh, the drive systems and uh, the stupid form idiot and uh, more. I'll be back.